What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the King's Court Podcast presented to you by SacktownRoyalty.com and sponsored by RateCrushers.com. For those of you that are all joining in, and it looks like a few guys are still trickling in here, I have a very special guest. She joined just last season before we found out the big news that she was taking over as one of the King's play-by-play announcers. And now she, I am lucky enough to see her joining back again. The one and only Katie Christensen. Katie, how you doing? Uh oh, it looks like she's muted. Let's see if I can get her to. Let's see if I can get her in here. Katie, can you hear me? Uh, having a bit of technical difficulties. Don't worry, guys. We are going to get that fixed. Katie, can you hear me now? I, I've been able to hear you the whole time. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, I got you. There she is. I finally got you. Are you going to read uh, restart it? Uh no, we're live. We're live on YouTube. Technical difficulties oh, okay. happen here all the time. So, Katie, sorry for the technical difficulties, but welcome back to the King's Court. Thank you for coming back on. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. So, you know, the the first time we had you on, like, like I said in the top of the show, we were still waiting to find out. You know, we were going to see if you were going to be able to take over that role and hop into the seat that you've ultimately hopped in. How, how has it been since taking over this spot as the King's sideline announcer? Um, well, you know, um, moving into the color analyst spot has been kind of a dream come true for me. You know, it's, it's something that there's, there's not a whole lot of, of positions that open up like that in the NBA. Um, and especially as a woman, you know, to be able to step into that role, that's, uh, that's a unique opportunity. So I've really enjoyed it. And especially this season, because it's a lot of fun calling a, calling a games of a team that is excelling to this degree. Yeah, 16 years, and the Kings are finally looking like this cloud that hangs over them of this drought uh, is finally going to go away. What has been, like, one, when you're watching this team, what do you think the biggest change has been? Obviously, the talent that's there, right, Sabonis and Fox being the pairing for an entire season, but culture-wise, being around these guys, do you feel as if there there's a real culture shift with them? Absolutely. I mean, I think that it kind of started last year with Sabonis coming in. I do think that he is is a major difference in terms of why that culture has, has well began to shift even last year. But, you know, when you look at it, what Mike Brown and his staff has done, um, the accountability for the high level stars, right? Like the De'Aaron Foxes, the Sabonises of the world, you know, to be able to, to really get a team to buy in. You have to be able to hold your superstars, your stars, as accountable as the rest of the team. And so I think that has something to do with it. But I think that Monty McNair did a fabulous job of bringing in kind of supporting cast members. Kevin Herter is a huge addition. I think Malik Monk has been really good. I mean, he's struggled really um, the last couple months a little bit with his shot, but he does give a lot of other things. His playmaking ability has, has been the biggest surprise. And you know, you look at kind of how Harrison Barnes started out the season, you know, from downtown, like shooting long range was really bad, like 30% through the first, you know, couple months of the season. And he has turned it around and he's just, you know, lights out from there. So I, I think that things with Malik are going to really kind of self-correct here as we get into the, you know, last third of the season. But, you know, speaking of Harrison Barnes, I mean, he has been so phenomenal especially as of late night he's also yeah. you know just a, a really great veteran that holds people accountable you know that 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 player Harrison Barnes just seems to cause a lot of question marks amongst Kings fans for some reason like everyone sees especially heading into February everyone sees the the expiring contract and says you know, trade him away to get some type of player back that fits X or addresses this need. But I've been very adamant in the fact that if the Kings were to trade Harrison Barnes, it would be one of the biggest mistakes 
for them. Now, now I'm not saying that there's no trade on the table that I, I wouldn't be okay with the Kings making, but it seems that the chemistry between these guys and the role that Harrison plays is something that you don't know if you'll get if a new player steps in there. And to to potentially throw that away, I think that would be a huge mistake at this point of the season. What what are your thoughts to those who say, you know, trading Harrison Barnes gets you back the best trade it is your best trade asset and gets you back whatever you need to fill X need that that's needed by this team? I think it can be extremely dangerous considering kind of how this team is playing. And um, I think it's really easy sometimes because of kind of other guys to underestimate the importance of Harrison Barnes to the success of this team this year. And so, you know, I, and I also think a little bit of it, you know, is kind of past, you know, traumas, if you will, um, with, with this fan base and this organization, because as you mentioned earlier, you know, you've got that, that 16 you know year old monkey on your back that, that you're just trying so desperately to advance to the postseason and yeah. in doing that what we've seen is a huge um you know kind of every february at the trade deadline it's this huge commentary about who they need to trade they need to get this they need to get that they need to get rid of so and so and i think that we're just so conditioned to thinking that that is something that we have to do and I, you know, Harrison is, is one of the longest tenured kings between Rashawn Holmes and De'Aaron Fox and him. And yes, he's on an expiring contract. And I think that that can be scary a lot of times. But you also sometimes have to put a little bit of faith in the the relationship that you've built with a player within your organization. I don't think that Harrison's going to go and and be able to leave and make the kind of money that he was making here on his last contract. I think the Kings gave him a very valuable, generous contract, and he has really been fantastic in his time here. Um, so, you know, I kind of am inclined to think that there may not be very many big moves for the Kings at the deadline. And they're third in the Western Conference right now. The chemistry that they have, the momentum that they've built, I think it's dangerous to mess with that by removing a player to the caliber of Harrison Barnes, especially in the importance of, of the success that you've had, his role in that. Yeah. But, you know, I understand. I understand, you know, the, the worry of, of not potentially having him back next year if that is the case then you lose them for nothing. But I think that's kind of, as a front office, you have to weigh your relationship with a player and your trust within him and his within you. And you kind of have to make the decision from there. Yeah. And what do you, what do you think people should, because the, the argument that I get in with a lot of these fans, whether it's an article there on Sacktown Royalty or even here on Twitter when we're talking about the games and, and how I say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm I'm a very I'm a very bullish person on Harrison Barnes saying that he fits this role perfectly as a number three four option uh, on this roster and the veteran presence that he brings. Also, if this Kings team is going to make that playoff spot, you're gonna want somebody that has been there, has been to an NBA yeah. Finals, that has that type of playoff experience, and I think that is also something that doesn't get accounted for uh, in these conversations about potentially trading him, but. The biggest argument from fans is is that he's taking away a role from Keegan Murray. And I don't get that sense. From all accounts to me and from people that I got to talk to that's around the team quite a bit is they they actually have a good relationship. Barnes is actually talks to Keegan quite a bit in their role and they play well off of each other. What can you say to that relationship between Barnes and, and Keegan Murray? Well, I can't speak much to the relationship between them individually. I mean, I think that Harrison is a really good role model. He's a professional. He's he's the kind of player that impacts everybody on the team, and especially a rookie. But I guess I don't really understand the the train of thought of he's taking something away from Keegan Murray. Neither do I. I, I don't I don't understand what that's what is he taking away? I mean, look at them in the month of January. Keegan is shooting the best three point field goal percentage in the month of January at like fifty point six percent. Harrison shooting fifty point five percent. And both of them are getting high volume three point shots. And Keegan led the league also in the month of December in three point shoot. What is he taking away I've... from Keegan Murray? I don't really get that. And and 
when you look at kind of the type of game both of them play, you know, I think Harrison offers right now at the stage in his career way more than Keegan does. And Keegan is able because of the play of Domas, of, of Harrison, of Fox, of Kevin Herter, to as a rookie be able to really focus on the things that he does well right now in year one while he continues to develop himself as a professional. And so I think that Keegan is doing as well as he is because of the existence of guys like Harrison Barnes, because he isn't being asked to do everything, which in the past, all rookies for the Kings have been asked to do way more than they're capable of at the time. Yeah, 100% agree. I I couldn't have said it better myself. I think Harrison Barnes is great, great veteran leader. He's been he's been great for this team since the moment he stepped here. True professional, one hundred percent. I do think there's moves to be made though, Katie, at this deadline. Whether it's with Barnes or not, I don't believe he's taking away any role. But I do think there is something to address with that backup center position. Obviously, Holmes was able to step in as a starter when Sabonis was sick, but there seems to be a question mark of who's that guy to turn to if Sabonis is ever to get into foul trouble or something like that. Uh, a name that continues to pop up is Mason Plumley. Uh, others that I, I like to bring up are like Frank Kaminsky or Mo Bamba. What are some names that you think the Kings fans should be listening for around that deadline? Or maybe not even at players, but positions, position of needs for you. You know, I this is where I'm super glad that, that my job is to kind of analyze what happens on the floor because yeah. – the front office, it's its just a, a minefield, if you will. It's a difficult job to do and to build a roster, to build a team, to address needs. But I think, you know, its it's been, you know, pretty obvious that the backup center position has been an area of concern. And, and how you can see that is the revolving door of rotations, right? We've had, you know, Rashawn Holmes not get time, then get a, get time. Chemezi Metu, even Nimi came in and had a few games and, and we were, you know, kind of told that he was going to take a look at, at Kata for a few games, but then all of a sudden he, he didn't touch the floor again. He wasn't in uniform, you know, and then Alex Lynn started a game. So you kind of look at like when someone's out, okay, someone's out, who starts? Well, it's not even the backup person that you normally go to when when Domas is available, right? Alex Lynn started that game. I agreed. I thought it was great, but he's really played very minimal minutes this year. Same thing with like when I think it was Kevin Herter was out a couple games and Terrence Davis started. And yeah. Terrence has kind of fallen out of the rotation. Um, so it's different in the sense of kind of how uh, Mike Brown and his staff choose to address it. But I, I would agree that, you know, obviously that seems like an area of concern and something that I'm sure the front office is looking at how they can shore up that backup center position. And yeah, the names that you mentioned, you know, they're they're all possibilities, right? That I think all of them would contribute in a certain way. Mo Bamba has kind of fallen out of the rotation completely in Orlando. He looked really good there early. You know, Plumley has a lot of experience. Kamiski, like they all offer certain things, but you know, I am that is one thing I am curious to see with the deadline approaching. If that um, kind of what seems like a hole in the in the in the lineup, how that is addressed or if it is addressed. Yeah. And it's I, and sometimes it's not even a matter of that they're like if there's no move made, it doesn't mean that they weren't trying to address it. Just because you're interested in a player or want to address a position doesn't mean that you're going to be able to work out a deal with the team that is favorable for you. So I'm I'm not saying address it to address it. If it's not favorable to to the Kings overall, then don't rush and and make this decision right now because you know guys like like Chimezi Metu, like Rashawn Holmes, they all have stepped up when needed and have done a decent job. I don't know, you know, that we're going to find a backup center that comes in and averages, you know, 10 and 7. I don't know that that's a possibility or an expectation. Yeah, I, I again, I, I think the, the, what, you're, what you're looking for is a center that is someone that can be relied upon in a consistent role over and over and over again. And, you know, the Kings have a few assets that they can move around. Obviously, they have a few second round picks that that Portland second round pick. What is it? The 2026, 2025 second round pick from Portland looks very interesting uh, just because of where Portland currently is sitting right now. But again, lots of moves could be made. We 
it'll be interesting to see with that was a February 4th deadline coming up. Um, but Thursday, Katie, I think is the bigger day to keep our eyes focused on because that is when uh, the TNT crew is going to be announcing the NBA All-Star Reserves. And two names come to the mind of Kings fans for De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. I was able to talk with uh, a few people online and they reached out to me with the odd shoppers and uh, shout out to Kyle Newman for reaching out to me. But the odds for De'Aaron Fox becoming an all-star has officially been released. He's a plus 1600 to be named a all-star reserve. I find that to be very, very interesting. Uh, I did not get the stats for, for DeMontis Sabonis, but to hear that Fox is still a plus 1600 as a potential all-star what do you think that says about about him becoming an all-star this this season? Well, you know, I think that is I don't I I'm so old school. I don't pay attention to a lot of the odds and so on and so forth, but what I can speak to is kind of how teams talk about our players when they come to town, right? Or when we're on the road and we 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 listen to the the coaches talk before games about the players and Domas and and De'Aaron like every single time these coaches are saying these guys are playing at all-star levels and these are the guys that are making the decision on who is going to be on that reserve team and i think that De'Aaron fox has made a tremendous case i mean he's he's led the charge of a team that has not been in the playoff for 16 years he's you know he's in his six years he's had five years of trying to elevate this team and move them in the right direction and when you look at what he's doing this year i mean it is it's crazy. I mean, he had a 21 point fourth quarter again against Minnesota. Yeah. You know, like what he is able to do, the way that his clutch numbers in the league this year. I mean, he is he is proving that he is a true all star. So yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm I'm excited to see. Um, I was a little upset and just kind of having to to kind of tamper your expectations when you see national media members release their all star reserves teams and and you know nine out of ten of them don't even have Demontis Sabonis on there the absurdity of that and sadly it's like I just think that despite the fact that the Kings have elevated themselves to the third in the Western Conference and have played so well throughout the year, that they're still not on a lot of people's radars to actually watch them. And some of that's not even their fault. Yeah. We've had zero, we've had one nationally televised game. The second one was taken away and people always argue like, oh, well, you guys don't have all-stars. Excuse me, how are you ever supposed to have all-stars and get on a national level if they'll never put you on TV? I mean, we have to continually watch the Lakers who are the bottom of the barrel in the Western Conference. And yes, I understand it's because of LeBron, but it's also like, okay, so do you want to watch the 13th, 14th team in the Western Conference? Or do you want to watch the third place team in the Western Conference that is playing incredibly well, that is a great feel-good story that has two of two emerging stars? And listen, DeMontis Sabonis is already a two-time All-Star. So I also don't yeah. understand that conversation if you guys don't have All-Stars. So That's we'll why see. I also I don't feel like that there should be fan voting for NBA All Stars, like that's one of the no, biggest I, things I mean, I for me. I I disagree with that. I mean, it's 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 meant for fans. I mean, it it's not. They should be able to have a part in it. In my mind, they're not the entire part, and there's a reason behind that. But like, yeah. it's even frustrating. Like, I think that there needs to be changes to how All Stars voted for. Um, fans should get a vote, absolutely. Coaches, players, but when you have players that are voting for, you know, Matthew Dellavedova, who I love dearly, he's on our team. He's he's a big part of it, regardless of the fact that he's on on the court very often. But two votes for him for all-star i mean that's not serious like don't that's not you can't take that seriously and i also think that there should be a minimum number of games that yes. players have played in 100%. it's really frustrating to see guys that have set out for more than half the season be voted in as starters in the all-star game like it doesn't make any sense so zion a start changes, named a starter missing 23 games and still sidelined uh with no yes. no real timeline is the yeah. all-star starter over Lori yeah. Markin and DeMontis Sabonis is pretty ridiculous to me. So, yeah, so hopefully they make some adjustments. I don't know. The sad thing is it's like it is a fan-based thing, but at the same time, one of the frustrating things as a former player, a lot of players have bonuses written into their contracts based on if they're an all-star. Yes. And it's like if you're if you're not going to be given the all-star nod because of, you know, somebody 
company that set out more than half the season, but they got the fan vote and that's just how it worked. Like that's, it's, it's frustrating in that sense. But aside from that, it's like, I just don't, I just don't put that much weight into it. Unfortunately, after maybe I'm a little, little uh, tainted in my thoughts after all these years in the NBA and kind of watching how it works. Yeah, for me, that's that. Uh, w- one of the biggest things for me is, like you said, there's incentives for these players to become all stars in their contracts, which is why I don't think fans should really have a vote. I get that it's a fan spectacle, but at the end of the day, like when you look back on a lot of these players' careers to say that they were this type of all star, this many time all star, and to know that the fans stopped it. That's what I mean. Zion got what was it, fifty two percent of the fan vote. And then also some of the the, the player vote, which uh, excelled him over Laurie Markin and, and DeMontis Sabonis, and he's missing 23 games. I think that has to play a factor into it. So maybe you're right. Maybe it's just more so a recalibration of how someone is considered an all-star and how those votes are being taken in. But that's those are those reasons, the incentive and the fact that when you look back on a player's career, And you're saying they were an all-star five times, three times, whatever number it comes out to be. And to have a fan be able to say Austin Reeves should be in there. And he was one of the reserves or one of the all-stars at that point or Matthew Della Vadova. That that does take something away from it. And that's that's why I say the, the fan voting should be taken away, in my personal opinion. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's always going to be a conversation. Um, I don't think it's ever going to change. Fan voting is never going to be taken away. And listen, like it is kind of meant for the fans. So maybe the things that should be taken away is the incentivized pay and contracts for players. I mean, that yeah. maybe it, the incentivized pay should be based on stats and stats alone instead of all-star nods and, and, and focus it on the first and second team all NBA. And those are things that... You know, it's not there's not so many different elements that decide on that if you get that nod. Yeah. Well, we will see what happens on Thursday. And just because I I wanted to have the stat for you, Demontis Sabonis, this is actually pretty surprising. He's a plus one thousand to be named a reserve. So if you for all those betters out there, if you bet one hundred dollars on Demontis Sabonis being named a all star reserve, it would pay out a thousand dollars. That's that is a. Uh, that's pretty crazy. That's an astonishing number to me, which means do they have like a Jaron Jackson Jr. or a Lori Market enlisted a higher than him and they're the number three team in the West? That would be it, it would blow my mind if the Kings didn't have an all star in this all star game sitting at number three in the Western Conference. Uh, but Katie, looking down the line here, obviously the Sacramento Kings play uh, against Minnesota uh, once again tonight on Monday, but then they also have a pretty favorable schedule down this stretch. I mean, they have against the Indiana Pacers twice, the Rockets twice, and in between there you have the New Orleans Pelicans. They're only three and a half yeah, games. Yeah, they've played back. the Pacers once. We've played the Pacers once already. So we play them the second time on the road um, to close it out. Yeah, and and I, sorry, Vince, I got to run here in a second because I got to get in my car and head to San Francisco for tonight's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. game. Um, but yeah, you know, I hope that the Kings are able to take care of business. The one thing about this road trip is when you look at it, it is favorable, favorable in terms of schedule, in terms of, you know, opponents records at this point, but then there's other things that you have to kind of play into it, uh, pay attention to Minnesota, you know, they were eighth coming into the game the other day, they're fifth coming into the game, um, this afternoon. They're a very, very good, talented team. They've been dealing with injuries, and sometimes we forget. We kind of just get so, you know, blindsided if or are, you have your blinders on, if you will, of just paying attention to seating and record and all that, and you forget to look at, like, who have they been playing without? What injuries have they had sustained? And we kind of fell into that with the Charlotte game when they came here and beat us at home. They finally were whole. And unfortunately, as of late, we're getting a lot of teams as they're getting whole. They've had gaps in their lineup throughout the season. So, and then you also have to look at, it is difficult playing the same team back to back in consecutive games, whether it's back to back with no day off or a day off, it's still difficult to come out with a 2-0 kind of record versus maybe a 1-1 record. So hopefully the Kings can take care of business tonight in Minnesota and then move on and just really focus. And maybe that was the wake up call that they needed that. Yeah that listen this road trip might look easy based on record of opponent but it is every team is going to challenge us every single game because of where we are we're third in the western conference we're not going to you know sneak up on anybody everybody is aware and they're going to come with their best game so hopefully the kings are are ready for this one tonight thank you so much Kate. i don't want to take up too much more of your time thank you again so much for joining in on the show 
Uh, excited to have you on. Good luck. Uh, or good luck. Have fun out there at the game tonight. And uh, if you're going on a flight, have a safe flight. All right. Thank you. Katie Christensen joined us here on the Kings Court once again. Such a great time. Such a good conversation. Uh, the, the big thing for me, I was going to ask to see if she thought De'Aaron Fox during this stretch could get uh, a day off. Was gonna be my was gonna be my next question, but I didn't want to hold it up. Like she said, she had a flight to catch. You know, there's a game tonight. Uh, Kings facing off against the Minnesota Timberwolves in a rematch after a 117-110 loss just the other day on Saturday. Man, lots to take in there. Fun stuff. While I have this moment, I want to remind everyone that this show is brought to you by RateCrushers.com and sponsored by SacktownRoyalty.com. There's some big changes coming along the way. Um, I believe Leo and Jordan, staff members of Sacktown Royalty, is going to be re- releasing something here soon, talking about it. Um, excited to excited to see what the next step is going to be. Still, big news coming. We will see where we're at. Pretty much all I can give you on that one, guys. Light the beam. Hopefully, we are able to make uh, that beam go up loud. Loud and proud tonight when the Kings take on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Fun stuff. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And until next time, Sacramento Kings fans.